Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, recover a tree from pre-order traversal. It's actually a pretty interesting problem, especially for a hard one. I think it's not too crazy. And I'm not gonna lie, today is kind of one of those days for me, I'm a little bit tired, but I mean, who isn't? So I'll still try to make the best video possible. And uh, by the way, how's the uh, mustache coming in? So the idea behind the problem is similar to another variation of this where we're actually given like a pre-order and like in-order traversal, and then we have to kind of reconstruct a binary tree. But I think that's like a binary search tree. This problem is a little bit different. So in case you've solved that problem before, just kind of keep that in mind. This one is different. So we are given a pre-order traversal of a binary tree, not a binary search tree. So you notice that here, there's no search property. It's not like every value on the left is gonna be less than the value at the root. And the form that we're given this pre-order traversal is pretty interesting. So see it over here. I'll go through what they mean by this because that's really what the whole problem is about. So in this example here, notice that we have a one. After that, we have a single dash and then a two. And then after that, we have two dashes and then a three. Now, there's not actually any spaces in the string like I've drawn them, but I'm drawing the spaces just to make it more clear what we are given. And uh, then we are given uh, two dashes and a four, and I'll keep drawing it down here. And then we're given a single dash and a five, couple dashes with a six, couple dashes with a seven. Again, this is given in the form of a single string, no spaces. And what this represents is First of all, it's straightforward to recognize that the numbers themselves represent the values of each node. And this example is pretty simple, but recognize that there could be multi-digit values. That's one thing you have to recognize. So this could have been a 20 or, you know, a 222, two, two, something like that. I think it's bounded by like a thousand. So that's the max value any node will have. We won't have any more than a thousand different nodes. But notice that we're also given these dashes, and these dashes are gonna be very useful for us. Each dash will tell us what the depth of that node is. So however many dashes come before a given value will tell us the depth of that node. This is very useful for us because it tells us that, first of all, like the first value, it's just a one, there weren't any dashes that came before it. So we know for sure that this is going to be the root. But actually, we didn't need the dashes to tell us that that was gonna be the root. We know that the way pre-order traversal works, I mean, if you're solving this hard problem, I hope you uh, do know how pre-order traversal works. If you don't, consider checking out some courses on Ecode.io. I'll try to briefly explain it right now. But basically, it means that like the way we would traverse this tree is first we traverse the root, then we would recursively run pre-order traversal on the left subtree, and then after we're done with that entire tree, we would run pre-order traversal on the right subtree. So recursively, this is how it's going to work. We're on the left side. We start with the root. We do that first, and then we go to the left side of that, and then we see three. We do that first. So you can see that the order that we were given these in, one, two, three, matches that of the pre-order traversal. And after that, we do four, and then we're done with the left side, so then we move to the right side, five, and then six, and then seven. So that matches the input order. So, so far, everything seems very simple. It seems like everything is given to us. It doesn't seem so bad, and it actually isn't, but there are a couple things you do have to notice. Why would they be giving us these dashes in the first place? There must be some level of ambiguity from just a single pre-order traversal. It's probably not gonna be enough for us to take this traversal and then rebuild the tree. That's what we're ultimately trying to do, rebuild a binary tree and then return the root of that tree. Again, these dashes will tell us the level of each node. So we see that, of course, a one will be the root, this will go on the second level. The second level can only have up to two nodes anyway. So we see that this is a node that will go on the second level. And of course, this is a node that'll go on the second level as well. And then we can see all four of these nodes will go on the fourth level. Of course, the dashes alone do not give us enough information on where to place the nodes. So we need to use a combination of these dashes as well as the fact that this order is a pre-order traversal to decide the correct positions. But isn't it possible that even with that information, there could still be some level of ambiguity? 
And actually, it is. Let me kind of just give you a very, very simple example. What about this? Okay, this tells me that I have one as my root. This tells me that one has to have a child of two. But I don't know if it's going to be the left child or the right child, right? You have no idea. Pre-order traversal would traverse this tree here, which it looks like this, the exact same way as it would traverse this tree where we had everything on the right side. So how do we know? Well, they actually make it very easy for us. They literally just tell us if a node has only one child, that child is guaranteed to be the left child. So we can definitely use that information to our advantage. That would make this very clearly to be this tree. It would look like this. One is going to have a child of two, a left child. And then for this node, three, I mean, there's nowhere to put it on the right side. It has to go over here. And two, again, we're not going to make it a right child of two. It only has one child. So we would make it a left child of two. So that's more or less enough information to be able to solve the problem. These are all the observations that you need to make. Now, the first thing I thought of after processing all of this information was maybe that we could just do some kind of level order traversal. That might be like the easiest way, because if I could just go through and uh, parse the input string and then determine, OK, we're going to have one at this level, we're going to have two and five at this level and three and six on this level and four and seven on this level, then maybe I can somehow just put the nodes together. And maybe I can do some kind of bias where then I can choose the nodes to go on the left side. Well, that would be ignoring the fact that the order of these elements was again the pre order traversal. So that's why it's not going to work. How do you know if seven should be a left child of six. And how do you know that seven shouldn't just be a right child of three? Our level order traversal would not give us enough information to do that. And so that's kind of when I realized that probably the way to solve this problem is to go through the input. At least one possible way that I thought of was, OK, I know that tree traversals can be kind of simulated with a stack. Pre-order traversal should be a doable with that. And so somehow we can scan through the input and I'll be honest, my thought process for this was just to try this and just figure out the little details as I went. And it just turned out that my code that I just kind of sloppily threw together, it did pass, it did work, and it was actually the optimal a linear time solution. So that's kind of what I mean by when I say this is one of those days where it's hard for me to really put a lot of effort into think about it from your guys' shoes if you were not able to kind of arrive at the solution. But I think the solution isn't super crazy for a hard problem. As I kind of just try it out, let's just try out the stack solution, figure out the little things as we go, and hopefully it'll make sense to you. I'm going to try this on the second example because I think it's a bit more difficult. So knowing what we know, this is why the stack solution seemed appealing to me. Because we could try something like this where we parse the input, we see the first a number, and we see that we haven't seen any dashes before it. We can just have a single variable to keep track of how many dashes we've seen as we parse the string. That's really not the hard part of this problem. Like so far, we've seen zero dashes. So this is our node. This is the value. And there could be multiple digits. So we might keep reading them until we no longer see any digits connected to this. It's just a one right now. So it's pretty simple. So we have a one. We can create a tree node of one and we can add it to our stack. So I'll just draw it like this, like as a node. And then we'll keep parsing the string. Now we see a dash. There's a single dash. So we'll keep track of that. We've seen one dash so far. And then we see another number. It's two. So that's kind of always going to be the case. I mean, can you imagine a tree where they with the rules that they gave us where we're going to have a node and it's not going to have a left child? I mean, that has to happen. Like that's guaranteed to happen if we have two nodes in the tree. We're never going to have a tree that looks just like this. So, so far, so good. We take now the next node that we've seen. Two, there was one dash that came before it. So we know that this node is on the next level. And we see that like our previous node, which was the root, it does not already have a left child. And thus, we're going to take two and add it to the stack. But we're also going to have ended up connecting this like with the two node. So just keep that in mind. Even though I'm just drawing the stack, we are sort of building the tree as we go as well. I'm going to keep parsing. And now is when things actually get interesting. Now is when there could be a junction in our solution. There could be two different possibilities. One is the possibility that occurs right now. We see two dashes 
and a three. So this is where keeping track of the dashes is actually going to be useful. So we've seen two dashes and then the value for our node is three. We will of course create a node for three. And the fact that this node is on the next level means we're going to take the node and now add it to the stack. And again, with the previous node that was on the stack, we're going to connect its left pointer to three. So that was one possibility. Can you please take a second to tell me what the other possibility would be? This is a hard problem. You should be able to figure it out. What would the other possibility have been? Well, if this node two did not have a left child, well, then it's guaranteed to not have a right child either. So again, you tell me which other place could we have possibly inserted a node? If not here or here, then the only place would have been here. So what if there was only one dash that came before the three and not two? How would our solution have been different? Try to answer it on your own, but if not, I'll answer it for you. If we had just one dash and the value was three, our solution would have to have been different. We would have then saw that this node has to go on the second level. It could not be connected to this node. It would have had to be connected to the root node. Now, how is that going to work with our stack based solution? What's our stack going to do? Well, isn't it true that our stack should kind of tell us like a path. It should tell us how deep we are. I mean, that's how stacks work. That's how recursive stacks work as well. So if you're doing this recursively, the recursion is going to be doing the exact same thing. It's going to tell you how deep you are in the tree. So really, we can use the length of our stack to sort of tell us the depth. And we can uh, compare the depth with the number of dashes because we know the number of dashes basically tells us the depth of the current node that we're trying to insert. So if I see that my depth, my number of dashes is equal to one, then I can say keep popping from the stack while the length of the stack is greater than the number of dashes keep popping from the stack. So in this case, we're only going to need to pop once we pop this guy and then we're good. Now the number of dashes matches the number of nodes in our stack. And that's good because now we can take the next node three, push it to the stack. And then we'll see that one already has a left child. So let's connect its right pointer to three. So that's more or less how to solve the problem. I think the rest of the things are just going to be like implementation details in the code. You can do those many different ways. I'll show you one way to do it. Um, but just to kind of run through the rest of this example. So let's just run through like the original example. So we saw that we had two and then we had uh, three, which was at the next level. So three then would have just been pushed to the stack and then we would have connected the pointer as well. And then we would have kept going. We see three dashes and then the four. So we see that the length of the stack is not greater than the number of dashes of the current node, which is four. So it's fine. We don't have to pop anything. Just add four once again. And of course, connect the left pointer of the previous node, the previous node that's on the stack first. The last node that was on the stack is going to be connected to the current node. So now it's going to get more interesting. Now we see one dash and then the five. So dash five. Now we definitely need to pop from the stack. Keep popping from the stack while the length of the stack is greater than the number of dashes. So this time we will have to pop three times from the stack. That's basically telling us that now we've gone as far deep as we can and we just want to like pop, pop, pop and come back to the root. So now we can start filling in the right side. Now, had this been like a double dash five, then we would have just needed to pop twice because we pop this and we pop this and the double dash tells us that now this node is going to be inserted over here. And the reason for that is because it was a pre order traversal. Remember, like this input was pre order. We're using the fact that it's a pre order traversal and the fact that we're always inserting left nodes first. And the fact that the dashes tell us the level of each node, we're combining all of these facts to arrive at a cohesive solution. So that's kind of like my thought process, at least. And now that we've popped these three, we will add five. We will connect the right pointer and then we'll keep going. Now we see two dashes and a six. So that's fine. The length of this is not greater than the number of dashes. So go ahead and insert six. And this time six should be the left child of five because five does not have a left child. So it makes sense. If you see the picture here, I'm just kind of filling it in like this now. And lastly, we'll see three dashes and a seven. So there's three nodes on the stack. No need to pop anything. Go ahead and add seven and connect the left pointer uh, just like that. Then at this point, we're done. 
So we've built the tree. How exactly do we identify the root and return the root? Well, if you notice the way like this logic is working, we're never going to end up popping the root from the stack. So we can always just return the first node that we added to the stack. The stack is going to be basically an array. We can just index it to get that value and just return that. So this way, I believe this solution is linear time. I don't know exactly if I'm doing anything fancy with like the string parsing in my solution, but I don't think I am. And I think it is a linear time solution for the stack, even if you're not counting the space that's occupied by the result of the tree, the stack still takes space. So if you want to see my super authentic uh, thought process, this was it. This was my solution that I just kind of threw together. So let's code it up now. Just a couple of variables I'm going to keep track of. The number of dashes, I'm just going to call that dash, or I guess plural is fine. And really, this is going to tell us the depth of a given node. And we're going to have the stack, which is going to be an array. And we're going to have our variable i, which is going to tell us what index we're at in the input string that we're trying to parse. So I'm going to do this while i is less than the length of the input. I'm going to check a couple things. I'm going to check if the traversal uh, of the character is equal to the dash, then just go ahead and increment the number of dashes and increment i. Otherwise, we can do this. We know the character is a number, so we want to just get all the characters, all the digits of that number. So I'm going to have a separate pointer, which I'm going to say j is equal to i, while j is in bounds. And the character is not a, a digit, or rather it's not a dash, so that means it is a digit. We will be incrementing our pointer, j. So once this loop stops, either we've reached the end of the input string or we've reached a dash. Either way, we want to just get all the characters from the I pointer to the J pointer and get the digit that that represents. So we can get the substring by slicing like this in Python from I to J. J is non-inclusive. Convert that string into a number like this with Python, and then we'll call that our value. And this value we want to use to create a node. We can call the tree node constructor that they've kind of given us the definition for up above, just passing in the value. And now is where things get tricky. If you're new to iteratively implementing something like this, it might take you some trial and error. I think I actually had like one or two bugs when I was uh, implementing this. But the first thing to do is recognize we want to add this node to the stack, but we don't know which position to add it to. And we also want to connect this node to possibly the previous node. So let's do this. While the length of the stack is greater than the number of dashes, we might need to pop from the stack. So we'll just do stack.pop. After we've popped all the necessary nodes, we maybe need to connect this node to like its parent. Unless, of course, this node is the root. I think this is where I actually had the bug. I initially tried something like this where I said, if not stack negative one dot left, then do this stack of negative one dot left is equal to the node that we just created. Now, what does this code mean? It's saying the last node that we added to the array, that's what negative one means in Python. If the left node or the left pointer is null, that's what the not means, then take the left pointer and assign it to the current node that we just created. But what if the stack is empty? That's what I did not account for. So we can actually fix that pretty easily like this stack and that. Now, the other case is else if the stack is non empty, then we just want to do this, except we want to do it on the right side. So you can just change this to the right pointer. Now, after we've done that, we do have to make sure that we take the current node and add it to the stack. So we can do this. And this will happen regardless of this executed or not, because we might be adding the root node to the stack. And also, just some like basic things to not forget are to update our i pointer. Since we iterated through all the digits, we might as well move i to be j now. And we can also reset the number of dashes back down to zero, because now we've just processed the current integer, the current node. So we can reset this to zero, so then we can recompute it up here. And I believe this is actually it. I was surprised that this worked, but I do think it does. We can return stack at zero. And unless there's some bugs or typos here, I will go ahead and give this code a run. And yeah, you can see here on the left side, it works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.